So spatial analysis puts one or more overlay analyses or other types of ana spatial analyses together into sort of a workflow that um, allows us to get to some solution. So in this case, we start out with four layers here. These two layers are combined into a new one. These two layers are combined into a new one. And then those two layers together are, com are combined into a final um, output layer, which would be the results of our analysis. This example here, we start with vegetation. Um, vegetation information, information on where the floodplain is located, and information on where soil or certain soil types are. And then when we, um, when we overlay those three into overlay analysis, we would get some combination here which would tell us how suitable land is for, um, for the purposes of this study. In this example here, we can look at, um, at wind speed, and the wind speed here is um, is given as just a series of numbers. So these could be grid cells that each have a, um, a number associated with it to represent the wind speed. And what they've done here is they've broken it into categories. So the, um, the darker gray represents high wind speeds and the lower gray represents low wind speeds. So they've taken the wind speed, they've used a reclassification based on the value of four. So everything um, below four is gonna be low wind speeds, everything above um, Four is going to be high wind speeds, and now they have this new wind class here. That's going to be one of the uh, steps in the final analysis here. But the other thing is population density. So here we're looking at um, what the census data is telling us, how many people per square mile live within an area. And then once again, we're breaking this down into two classes. So with the, if the population density is less than two people per unit area, it's low population density, and greater than or equal to 10 people is high population density. So now we have two classes in two different um, GIS layers, and now we're able to combine those into a um, map that shows us how suitable an area is for, um, for wind energy. So we have to have both the um, supply in these areas or the wind speed in order to operate the wind turbines, and then we also have to have the demand or we have to have people nearby that could use this wind energy if we do harness it. So then we take the wind class and the population class and overlay those and then we get the two classes combined so we can see where the wind speed is high and the population density is low and those would be the suitable areas so that um so that the wind turbines don't interfere with people's view sheds or what they what they see when they look out their door. And in this way, we can um, identify suitable sites for where, um, for where we might harness wind, wind energy.